ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما انك انت السميع القريب المجيب First of my dearest sisters assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh you know jazakallah jazakunallahu khairan to um hugs uk for inviting me i'm i'm really greatly honored it's my first time to ever speak to a uk audience and um just to mention it is 11 o'clock at night and it's first time i've ever done a talk this late <laughs> alhamdulillah um i just want to begin also by saying that i ask allah taala that you and your families are all in the best of health and iman and especially at this time when so many people are going through a lot of tests with this pandemic inshallah so my dearest sisters just like we entered ramadan with a certain goal that we you know wanted to achieve from it now is the time for us to review that goal and do al muhasaba of ourselves and to take an honest look at how much we're trying to hold you know hold on to the lessons and good habits that we learned from the month of ramadan inshallah because one of the greatest signs that you know you're from the successful ones in the month of ramadan is that you find yourself better than than you were before ramadan came and you find yourself you know continuing to hold fast to the righteous deeds and stay away from falling into those old habits and sins that you were doing before ramadan came as much as you can and just generally you know you can notice an overall improvement in your iman your manners your dealing with people you should see some sort of difference inshallah now one of the biggest mistakes a lot of people make is they put a lot of effort into what they do in ramadan you know we pray at night we recite quran we give charity we try to do all of those things that brings us close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month but then what happens is very often what we do unfortunately is as soon as ramadan's over we tend to let it all go and we tend to let ourselves slip slowly back into the same old sins same old bad habits that we were doing before ramadan came and that's actually why so many people experience such a huge anti climax once ramadan is over so you need to realize that you know the state of your iman cannot remain upon high levels unless you're constantly maintaining it by you know continue you know remaining consistent upon doing the righteous deeds and good habits um that you know at least some of what you were doing on ramadan you should be trying to maintain that after ramadan of course nobody can do on the same level as they were doing on ramadan but you've tried to hold on to at least some of what you were doing on ramadan and we need to understand first of all about iman okay we need to understand you know we need to understand iman in the first place the, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us that in al iman la yakhluqu fi jawf ahadikum kama yakhluqu al thawb fas'alu allah an yujaddida al iman fi qulubikum so he told us sallallahu alaihi wasallam that verily iman wears out in the chest of one of you just like a person's garment wears out so therefore you need to ask allah ta'ala to renew your iman in your heart so we need to be you know constantly and actively trying to renew our iman and asking allah ta'ala always to renew our iman because very quickly the iman be can become worn out and so this is why you know the messenger of allah is telling us that we you know we need to you know in order to keep our iman safe that we need to be constantly striving to maintain our iman and like i was saying before that this is one of the mistakes that you know so many people do make that once ramadan is over unfortunately what they tend to do is neglect their iman and so over time what happens is your iman wears out without you even realizing and then unfortunately sometimes too what we find that you know then you know we sometimes find ourselves shocked unfortunately when we find people suddenly making you know very obvious outward changes about themselves may allah protect us all and keep us steadfast you know but the reality is that couldn't have happened unless there was something already going wrong with that person's internal state in the first place okay so you know if you see anything happen outwardly it means something else was going wrong internally to start off with so this is why my dear sisters the greatest thing that you could be given after iman in allah 
is to have what's called al istiqama which is the theme of you know of today's um talks and this is exactly why in the hadith in muslim when sufyan ibn abdullah came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he asked him qul li fil islam qawlan la as'alu anhu ahadan ghayrak ya rasulullah tell me something in islam tell me some words in islam that i cannot ask anybody except you and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told him qul amantu billahi thumma istaqim say i believed in allah and then remain steadfast so this is what we need this should be our aim in this life not just to say oh, you know la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah but now it's a matter of holding on steadfast to that and sisters just like you know just like when you go on a long journey you need to stop from time to time to you know refill your petrol tank restock the provisions that you need for your journey and this is exactly like what ramadan is like it's like an iman stop that you know allah ta'ala has given us this iman stop where we take a pause from our usual life in order to revive our iman and the other thing we also need to need to do is to take from the provisions that allah gives us in ramadan in order to continue on in our journey of this life and this is similar to what allah ta'ala tells us when he says wa tazawwadu fa inna khayra zadi at-taqwa that you know take your provision but the best provision that you can take for your journey is at-taqwa the taqwa of allah subhanahu ta'ala the 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 wearing of allah subhanahu ta'ala knowing you know the god consciousness of allah subhanahu ta'ala right so this is the most important thing we need to take in this life for this journey of life so that's why when i wanted to speak to you about today are the six habits of the people of al istiqama what are the six habits of the people of al istiqama these are habits you'll find that anybody who remains steadfast they're trying as much as they can to hold on to these habits inshallah and like i was saying all these habits are from the provisions that we need to take with us from the month of ramadan as well okay so first of all and from the most important of these habits is a salah because this is the reality is if you know we were really praying our five prayers in the way that allah ta'ala meant for us to pray them and when i say that i mean you know on time not missing our prayers trying our best to stay focused in our prayers then that prayer should have an effect on us right allah ta'ala tells us inna salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar that very the prayer forbids a person from going to sins and to, to evil deeds So therefore if we're really praying in the way Allah Ta'ala intended us to pray this should be an effect our salah should affect our whole life in every day, you know from every aspect and that's why in you know if someone finds themselves weak in their iman and struggling to stay steadfast the first thing they need to look at is you know the true state of their their prayers and how much they they're honestly striving to try to get the most out of those prayers okay because the prayers is you know what fixes your life you fix your prayers you fix your life that's what it comes down to now the second of the daily habits of the people of al istiqama is that they hold fast to the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right and allah ta'ala tells us in the quran inna hadha al quran yahdi lil lati hiya aqwam that verily this quran it guides to all that is upright it guides to everything that is upright Now in this time that we're living in when we are so surrounded but you know by so much falsehood and dalala you know misguidance none of us can afford to not have a habit of you know memorizing reciting and you know reflecting on at least some ayat every day from the Quran okay even if it's just a page you read each night before you go to sleep or after fajr each morning that none of us can afford to be away from the book of allah taala right the, the reality is that you know when you recite the quran especially with tadabbur you know really focusing on the ayat you know thinking about how those ayat you know what what are the lessons allah taala is trying to give you through those ayat and how can you relate them to your life this is what fills your heart with nur from allah subhanahu taala it fills your heart with with light from allah subhanahu taala so that you're able to distinguish between the haq and the batil between the truth and the falsehood 
And especially in, in these times, we're in the greatest need for guidance. SubhanAllah. We're in the greatest need for guidance in these times. All right. So the third habit of the people of Al-Istiqama is being in a constant state as much as possible of, of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because as the Prophet وسلم, told us, that the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hisnul muslim, right? It is the fortress of a Muslim. So the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what fortifies you as a believer. It's what protects your heart, you know, from the whispers of shaitan and from deviation. And this is why I always tell sisters, you know, especially when you're not able to pray, you need to increase in your amount of dhikr that you say each day, you know, as much as you can. Fill your day with subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, allahu akbar, astaghfirullah, as much as you can. But besides that, you know, we have certain times where we are directed to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like after each prayer, you know, in the mornings, in the evenings, before going to sleep. Try to stick to those times and don't, don't be from the ghafilin. Don't be from the heedless who forget about Allah and the next life. So we need to realize that in order for us to remain steadfast outwardly, it's imperative that we are, you know, constantly nourishing our inner spiritual state, right? We'll never be fixed outwardly unless we fix the internal because the internal state has a direct impact on the outward state and that's like what the messenger of Allah sallallahu tells us that inna fil jasadi mudgha idha salahat salah al jasadu kullu wa idha fasadat fasad al jasadu kullu ala wa hiya al qalb right so he tells us that you know verily in the heart there is a clump of flesh that if it is you know correct and rectified the rest of the actions and the, you know, everything outward will be rectified. But if there's corruption in it, may Allah protect us from it, then the rest, you know, that, that corrupts the outward. And what is that thing? It is the heart. Verily, it is the heart. So we, we need to be constantly focusing on strengthening our hearts, nourishing our iman in our heart in order to, you know, keep ourselves steadfast. So we come to the fourth point from the habits of the people of Al-Istiqamah. And that is that we need to not completely let go um, from, you know, doing sadaqah from time to time and, you know, fasting. These are things we learned from Ramadan. And after Ramadan, we should try to hold on to these uh, practices, even from time to time. Because when you do these, you know, acts of ibadah, you're constantly purifying yourself and you're bringing yourself closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through performing them. And as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in a hadith Qudsi, that Allah ta'ala, you know, said, وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَ مِمَّا افْتَرَدُّ عَلَيْهِ That my servant does not draw near to me by anything that is more loved to me than what I have made fad and obligatory upon him. So if, you know, we start with the fad things, and then he says, وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ and that my servant continues to draw close to me through an nawafil hatta uhibba until I love him. And then when you get to that level, may Allah make us all from that level, the, uh, Allah Ta'ala you know, says in this hadith Qudsi, as related by the Messenger of Allah, that فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهِ Like that when I love him, I become the hearing with which he hears, you know, the seeing with which he sees the hand with which he strikes, the foot with which he walks. What does that mean? It means that you become under the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala is protecting you from in every aspect of your life. So subhanAllah, this is the greatest way to attain al-istiqama al through always trying to do those, you know, trying to do those, those acts of worship that bring you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why I just want to quickly mention too, that you know, one of the best things that you can do as soon as um, you know, Ramadan is um, finished, try to hasten to make up those missed Ramadan fasts as quickly as you can. Don't delay them till you know, next Ramadan, right? Because when you've completed the, your obligations towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that leaves you free to focus on doing those nawafil for the sake of Allah that you know, they raise you to a higher level through doing them, inshallah. Okay, I come to the next point, which is point five, which is, you know, we need to also keep on making tawbah and returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even 
even if you don't think you've done any major sins. This is from the habits of the people of Al Istiqamah, that they always return back to Allah Ta'ala. And if we look at what does Allah Ta'ala say in the Quran, Ya Yuladina um, Amanu, you know, Utubu ilallahi jami'an, ayyuhal mu'minuna, la'allakum tufihun. So Allah Ta'ala tells us, you know, um, he tells us, uh, you know, oh, you who believe, you know, turn back to, um, all of you turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, th that you may uh, be successful, subhanAllah. So in other words, he's, he did not say, oh, sinners. He said, oh, you who believe, right? Oh, oh you believers, all right? Um, or the mu'minin. He actually mentions the mu'minin. So it shows that it's not about being a sinner that you, you in order for you to make tawbah, rather that it is from the, the characteristics of the mu'minin that they constantly um, make tawbah back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, doing al-muhasaba, doing al-muhasaba of the nafs, you know, calling yourself to account, looking at yourself inwardly always. This is, what's, this is what helps your heart to stay soft. And it protects you from, from your heart becoming hard. You know, because over time, our hearts become hard sisters. And, you know, the darkness of sins can start to build up on the heart. And that's why it's so important that, you know, we're constantly reviewing our actions, our words, our intentions. You know, asking yourself, you know, when you do something, ask yourself, you know, did I really do that with ikhlas? Was that, what was what I did something that, you know, pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or was it really done just to, you know, please others and make them more accepting of me? So sisters, no matter who we are, we all fall into mistakes and sins of some kind. So we need to, you know, keep on returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, you know, purifying ourselves and softening our hearts by asking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always. All right? Don't ever think it's only for people who do major sins and I don't need it. We all need it. That's the reality. And just I want to take also one quick opportunity here to mention um, that if you're ever struggling with any type of addiction, you know, please reach out and get professional help for, you know, any type of weakness you, you may have. And don't try to keep on, you know, struggling with that type of addiction, um, trying to control it on your own. Sometimes you actually need professional help to, to, to help yourself, you know, to overcome certain types of um, what you, you know, they are. They are sins, but they become addictions. So sometimes you need to reach out and really get that help. And don't try and struggle on your own, inshallah. Okay, so the last of the habits that I wanted to uh, speak about is to hold on to praying Qiyam al-Layl, which is the night prayer. Because the Prophet وسلم, told us about Qiyam al-Layl, he mentions a few qualities of Qiyam al-Layl. He says that it's that the Salihin, that it's the habit of the, the, the righteous who came before you. And it's, it's a qurba. It's a qurba ila rabbik. Like it is, you know, a, a righteous deed that brings you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that it's, it's an action that um, expiates for your sins. And it's also something that prevents you from falling into sin. So this is how, subhanAllah, the Messenger of Allah showed us that, you know, qiyam al-layl is actually an act of ibadah, an act of worship that helps, you know, to, helps to pre prevent us from becoming misguided and from falling into sins. Because what you find is that besides the light that Allah Ta'ala gives to the person who prays Qiyam al-Layl, if you think about it, if you can develop this, this, the discipline to you know, wake up in the last part of the night, then it should be much easier for you as well, inshallah, to also stay away from you know, sins or misguidance. Bi idnillahi ta'ala. And one of the things that the Prophet ﷺ taught us as well, and I just want to mention this very quickly, it's important, is, you know, don't have the all or nothing approach. And this is something I have to even say to myself all the time. Because what we tend to say to ourselves is, oh, I can't do all that. So then we end up doing nothing. But we have to keep on reminding ourselves that, you know, the most beloved deeds to Allah Ta'ala, what does, you know, the Messenger of Allah tell us? Ahab al-amali Allah, right? Ahab al-amali Allah, adwamuha wa inqal that they are the consistent deeds, even if they're small, even if they're little, but what Allah loves the most is you try your best to stay consistent on those deeds, even if it's, you know, a small amount. So let's say you're not able to, you know, wake up in the last third of the night and, and pray many, you know, raka'at of um, qiyam. Maybe you can just pray two, just raka'atain, keep it light, or 
something else the ulama mentioned is you can pray before going to sleep. If you stay up late, you can pray even just rock that ten before you go to sleep. So I want to just uh, mention three quick final points of how to have um, al-istiqama after Ramadan. And the first one is to have sincere resolve, have the sincere resolve to stay on the straight path, right? You have to want to stay on the straight path, first of all. You have to decide that this is what I want for my life. And then you have to be constantly renewing that resolve in your dua, in your sajda, right? Especially in your sajda, because that's when you're closest to the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And say duas like, Rabbana afrig alayna sabran wa tawaffana muslimin. You know, the dua that's mentioned in the Quran. Oh Allah, pour patience upon us and let us die as Muslims. Right? These are the kinds of dua we should be constantly saying because they keep us focused on our goal. Then the other thing is surround yourself with the right company. This is very important. In our journey towards Allah, we need to surround ourselves with the right company. We were talking about friends, we were talking about lessons, who you follow on social media. All of those things have an impact. And the Messenger of Allah says, Right? That a person will be upon the same religion as, as his friend. So look each of you to whom you befriend. And then last of all, my dear sisters, always keep the end in mind. Always keep the end in mind. Never stop looking forward. You know, this life is hard, no doubt. You know, and yes, holding on to our deen and remaining steadfast is like trying to hold onto a hot coal, especially in these times. But when you keep reminding yourself about how short this life really is, and when you remind yourself of the reward that Allah Ta'ala gives to that person who keeps himself patient upon this path until they meet with him, Azza wa Jal, and that in the end, for the believer who tried her best in this life, you know, there's only endless joy and peace and happiness in the end, right? There's no more pain, no more worries, no more sadness. And there's only Jannah. In it, there's that which no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, and it's never, no heart has ever imagined, no human heart has ever imagined, right? So if you keep holding on to that all your life, this is what makes whatever you have to go through in this life become light on you, and it helps you to cope with what you have to go through, right? And I want to leave you, inshallah, with one of the most beautiful ayat from the Quran in which Allah Ta'ala describes just one of the rewards for those who remain patient. And this is, who remain patient upon his path, right? They remain steadfast upon his path. And this is in Surah Fussilat. So Allah Ta'ala says in these verses, in <laughs> so Allah Ta'ala tells us in these verses that verily those who said, Rabbun Allah, my Lord is Allah, thumma staqamu, then they remained steadfast upon that path. That at the time of their death, at the time when, you know, you're in so much need and so vulnerable and feeling so alone, at that moment, Allah Ta'ala sends his malaika down to you and says, and they say to you, Allah takhafu, do not feel afraid. And do not feel sad. 
receive the good news of Al Jannah, Alati Kuntum Tuadun, that you were promised by Allah Ta'ala. Okay, so this, this, this is what, you know, SubhanAllah, this is how Allah Ta'ala, this is the reward that Allah Ta'ala gives that person who stayed steadfast upon La ilaha illallah in this life. You know, that at that moment, imagine that when you're dying and when you feel more helpless and alone than you've ever felt, this is how Allah Ta'ala sends his angels to comfort and strengthen you. And he keeps you steadfast upon La ilaha illallah, upon your death, just as you stayed steadfast in this life. And that's how Allah remembers you in your time of need, just because you remembered Allah in your time of ease. So I'll finish up by saying that I ask Allah to keep us all, keep all of us and our families upright upon the straight path. You know, Ya Allah, we ask you to help us to live upon La ilaha illallah and to die upon La ilaha illallah and to meet with you upon La ilaha illallah. Ya maqalib al qulub, thabbit qulubuna ala dinik. ربنا لا تزيل قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ولا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بارك الله فيكم